Let's talk about testosterone in aging men because it's a very well marketed concern these days. So I was surprised when I came across the truth about testosterone supplementation because it's not what you'd think. This is the homepage for Best Science Medicine podcast. They provide very thorough reviews and analysis of research related to family medicine. They are totally independent and objective and free of any pharmaceutical influence or bias. CFPC stands for the College of Family Physicians of Canada. This is one of family medicine's governing bodies. Integrity is of utmost importance. They too are free of pharmaceutical bias. They publish tools for practice summaries that usually end up being the basis for a Best Science Medicine podcast. This is the podcast in question that came out in November 2024 regarding testosterone supplementation. It's about a half hour long. Listen to it if you have the time. And here is the related tools for practice. The question, what are the benefits and harms of testosterone supplementation? And the bottom line, while testosterone may, may slightly increase muscle mass, it did not improve any of the outcomes that men would typically be hoping for. And in fact, there were some small risks associated with testosterone. These were studies on men with low testosterone levels proven by their blood tests. And the formulation of testosterone supplementation didn't seem to matter, meaning pill versus gel versus injection. And on blood tests, after they were supplemented, their testosterone levels did rise. But the results will surprise you. This is where all the evidence is detailed. And to summarize the results, no improvement in sexual function, no convincing improvement in strength, no improvement in fatigue, no improvement in cognition, no improvement in quality of life, and no improvement in depression, which was actually mentioned in the podcast version. It did show lean body mass went up about 1.6 kilograms on average. That's three and a half pounds. When you look at the potential harms, the good news is that there was no increased risk of heart attacks or strokes. There was no increase in prostate cancer risk. And there was no increase in all-cause mortality, meaning dying from any cause. But there was a small increased risk in atrial fibrillation, which is a heart arrhythmia, and a small increase in pulmonary embolisms, which are blood clots to the lungs. And the podcast mentioned maybe a small increase in, the in, in fracture risk. This is practice changing. It changes the way I'll be discussing testosterone with my patients moving forward, and especially those who are already on testosterone. It's important that patients have all the facts and all the numbers so that they can make informed decisions for themselves.